You only want to follow what makes good for you. You only take the Bible and you put it into your life to where you're supposed to be putting your life into God's hand, right? God did not create you for you to do exactly what you want to do. What's up, what's up, I said, what's up? I got it for you. You already know who it is. I'm your guy, Neil Legend. And um, we about to get into these reviews, man. So I'm sorry if I'm puffy right now. I'm sorry if I sound hoarse, but I just got finished doing immense crying. <laughs> I was listening to music and um, I resonate with music. So um, excuse my makeup for running. I don't have makeup on. Come on, guys. That was a joke. But um, we about to get into it. So, you know, I listened to this guy. His name is Alan Parr. I listened to Alan Parr. Uh, he is a man of God. I listened to him. He always come with some great stuff. But this next video, um, I, I, I don't know all about this one. I really don't. So I'm going to make a, 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 a response video. I'm going to let you hear what he say. Um, and then after that, we are we are going to respond well, I'm going to respond. You can respond in the comments or send me an email. I'm going to respond to his things with my opinion and where I feel like if he's right or if, or, or, or if he's wrong and where he's wrong and stuff like that. So without further ado, let's get into it. Here your boy is, Alan Parr. I call him Brother Alan Parr. And if you want to go look at his YouTube channel, his YouTube channel is called The Beat by Alan Parr. That's A-L-L-E-N-P-A-R-R. -R. All right, let's get it. I'm gonna make a bold statement right now and say that if you are someone who is professing to be a Christian and you are doing this one thing, you may not be saved. Now, what is this one thing? What was Alan Parr to say? You may not be saved. Hmm? All right, let's get to it though. It's going to become very, very clear as I go through this video and I'm going to explain it in detail. But before I tell you what this one thing is that might disqualify you from being a Christian, even if you think that you are and you profess that you are, I want to bring to your attention a scripture in the New Testament okay. where Paul said this, examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Right. Test yourselves. Okay. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. All right. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. Now, That's this fact. Greek word here for the word examine simply means to put something to the test or to put something on trial. Well, put me to and test. So this is a present imperative verb. Basically, the word present means it's something you should continue to do as a Christian. And then also the word imperative means that this is not a suggestion. This is a command from the Apostle Paul. He says, hey, this isn't something you should pray and ask someone else to do. This isn't something you should ask God to do. He says, examine yourselves and put your faith to the test. Now, right. I'm going to give you a series of questions that I really want All you right, to get be to serious get to about answering. And it's going to see whether your faith is genuine. Some of these fall in the category of beliefs right. and others fall in the category of behavior. Think I'm good. So let's get I'm the good. test started. Let's get it. I'm going to tell you the one thing that many professing Christians are doing that might disqualify them from actually being a Christian. Okay, question. So what can disqualify you from actually being a Christian? Like, he, he's a man, so I don't know. Let's just get to it. Number one. Do you believe that believing in Jesus is the only way to get to heaven? That Christianity is the only solution to sin and all other religions are false? Question number two. So, I agree with that 95%. And it's only one thing that I have a problem with is that I agree. Jesus is the only way to get to God. But I always had a problem with believing that Christianity was God number one religion to where I believe and I'm saying I, I believe that Christianity is still man made and uh, there's nowhere in the Bible that the word Christianity, Christianity even exists. He calls us Christians, but just because he calls us Christians doesn't mean that there's just an exclusive organiza organization called Christianity and um that's why I say hey I'm a man of God I'm a man of faith um 
I have been in organized church. I have been in non-denominational church, denominational church. I have did that. But I just, I really truly believe that Christianity is man-made. Now, if I'm ignorant, I would love you to comment down below and let me know where I'm right, where I'm wrong. Give me some scriptures. Give me some information um, that can prove me wrong. Because I've been, I've been studying and I haven't found nothing that compelled me to change my decision. Now, also, Alan Park, please reach out to me. Give me information. Help me study. Let me know. Um, but that's just the that's just one part I disagree with is that I do uh, I do agree with the first part, but that part about when you brought in Christianity, I don't believe that. But let's continue. Do you believe that you cannot be saved simply by being a good person? That, hey, just because... Yes, you cannot be saved just by being a good person. At the end of the day, we are created to serve God. You can't say that I'm a good person. Who are your standards by? Who are your standards by? What is your standard? Who giving you your standards? Who do you answer to? Where do your standard come from? Your standard may be good in the eyes of man, but may be horrible in the eyes of God. So yes, I agree with his. Right now he's basically two for two. You're morally upright and you're a good person. That's not enough for somebody to actually be saved. Question number three, do you believe that the Bible is the inerrant word of God? Do you believe? Yes, I believe the Bible <laughs> is the inerrant word of God. So far, Alabar, you on to something. But the Bible that we have today is inspired by God yes. and 100% completely without 100%. error. 100%. Question yes. number four, do you believe that Jesus is God the Son and lived a perfect life? Question yes. I believe God the Son lived a perfect life. I do not believe that he was just a man with fault like other people do we ain't gonna get into that today but yes alan paul you own to something you are question number four do you believe that jesus is god the son and lived a perfect life question number five do you believe jesus rose from the dead question number six do you believe question number five did jesus roll from the dead uh, yes he did question number six let's get to it believe that jesus is going to return one day for his church and there will be a final judgment. Now, question number six, he gonna return and be a final judgment? Yes, I believe that, let's get to it. Now let's move on to behaviors. Do you believe that abortion is a sin? Do you believe that? Woo! Do you believe that abortion is a sin? This is one of them ones that I don't know, but if you know I had a podcast that was called Let the Conversation Begin, I actually made an episode with my co-host Nikki C saying it's abortion murder, and I do believe a thousand percent abortion is murder, which murder is sin. Yes. Alan Paul, you on the road, man. Hold on, I might have misjudged you from the beginning. Let's let's go. Homosexuality is a sin. Let me, let, let's Question go back to that. Final let's go back to judgment. That. Now let's move on to behaviors. On to Do that. you believe that abortion is a sin? Yes. Do you believe that homosexuality is a sin? Question. Ooh, that's going to be a whole nother episode, but of course, it ain't just a yes. Of course, homosexuality is a sin. Yes. Three, do you believe that marriage is between one man and one woman and anything outside of that model is outside of God's intent? Alan Parr, you lo you're losing me now. You're losing me now. But you're losing the flesh side of me. You're losing the flesh side of me. But the spiritual side of me is like you, you is 100% right because that's Bible. The design and therefore sin. Next question, do you believe that sex before marriage is a sin? And the last question. So you mean to tell me we can't have sex before marriage? Come on, bro. Like, like why can't we do that? It's, it's over 7.8 billion people in the world. You mean to tell we can't do that? To think of it, that's probably the reason why me and my fiance has been together for three years and haven't had sex right now. 
you know, you wanted something. That's that's Bible too. That's Bible too. Oh, I forgot. These ain't your words. These about God. Sorry. Do you believe that culture does not dictate what is and what is not sin according to God? Now, obviously, there are many other beliefs associated with Christianity. Of course, culture dictates a lot of things and culture have an agenda. That's a whole nother episode as well as a plethora of behaviors. But here is the one thing, my friends, that many people who are professing to be Christian, they may have grown up in the church, they may be convinced that they are a Christian, but if they're doing this one thing, they very well may not be. And that one thing, my friend, is whenever they pick and choose what parts of Christianity that quote unquote work for them. See, you're going a little too far now, Mr. Allen Parr. You're going a little too far. Because we are humans. This is our life. And we should be able to pick and choose what we want to do. We should be able to read this and say, you know what? I want to follow this. And I don't want to follow this. That's what we should be able to do. So what you mean by this? Like, why can't I pick and choose? What's wrong with me picking and choosing? And you might come back to me and say, well, what's wrong with picking and choosing that you say you're a man of God. You say you're a woman of God. And if you're a man or a woman of God, you have given your life to the Lord. There are scriptures that God has in there that want you to do things and don't want you to do things. And if you're a man of God, you have to follow God's word. You have to follow what God want you to do. It's not your choice. God said, no sex before marriage. You can't go out and have sex before marriage just because you feel it in your heart. And if you put it to me that way, then I agree with you. You see, many people who profess to be Christians, they want the benefits of Christianity without subscribing to the beliefs and the behaviors of Christianity. Oh. We want the benefit of prayer. We want the benefit of God's provisions. We want the benefit of God's protection. We want the benefit of God's blessings and God's favor. We want the benefit of the community of God. Mm -hmm. We want the benefit of going to heaven. We want all of the benefits of being a Christian without the responsibilities of what it means to actually be a Christian. My friends, this is what you done said a mouthful right now, Mr. Allen Parr. Mr. Allen Parr, come on, man. Come to the front of the congregation. We need to talk. How can you sit there and tell me that I want what I want without the responsibility? How can you sit there and tell me I want what I want without the consequences of the things that I do? I keep on forgetting. This ain't your word. This is God's word. Let's, let's continue. Jesus. I call buffet Christianity. And this is the idea that, you know, when you go to a buffet, you say, okay, I want a little bit of beef, but I don't want any fish. Or you know what, I'll take a slice of pizza, but you know what, I don't need any chicken. And so you get to pick and choose and put what's on your plate, everything that you want, and then you get to reject all the things or ignore all the things that you don't want to eat. And my friends. All right, we're gonna stop it right there. Um, like I said, his name is Alan Parr. Um, he is a pastor. He have a channel, YouTube channel, it's called The Beat by Alan Parr. You need to go look it up. The video, that's only four minutes to the video. We have four minutes left. Um, I'm not gonna get into the last four minutes because he then gave you the points. And um, if you want to know his conclusion, please go to his channel, support him, and 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 see what he say at the end. Um, because at the end of the day, I know I did it funny and whatnot. I tried to, I may fail, but no, I agree with everything that he said. I agree with everything. I was serious about the first one though, about the Christianity. I was really serious about that. But everything else, no, I agree with everything that you said. And at the end, this conclusion right here, when you're talking about that we live in this world, in this society, that people want to pick and choose what it is that they want to do, that is 100% right. Like, how can you say you're a man of God? Or how can you say that you're a woman of God, but yet and still, you do not follow God's law. You do not follow what God have intended for us to do. The law is the Bible. The law is the word. You do not follow this. You only want to follow what makes good for you. You only take the Bible and you put it into your life to where you're supposed to be putting your life into God's hand, right? God did not create you for you to do exactly what you want to do. I'm sorry. Let's just be real. 
It sounds good to say I'm a man of God. It sounds good to say I'm a woman of God. It sounds good when you on stage and you say I give all love to God. It sound that all sounds good. I I thank God for all my opportunities. That sounds amazing. That sounds excellent. But are you living it? Are you living it? Are you applying God's word to you in this whole totality? Are you applying it? You see, I'm going to say this and I get out of here. I didn't, a lot of women broke up with me, especially in my past. And the reason why is because a lot of women say that they want a God-fearing man, a godly man. And, um, and I am that. I am that. And I say that with confidence because I know where I came from and I know the work I put in. But the problem that I had was that a lot of women was like, oh, oh, you too much of a holy roller, a holy roller. You, you missed, missed the church, like Bible, Bible holding, scripture quoting. And what they mean is, is that they feel like I was over the top. They feel like I was really over the top with my faith is what they said. They're like, it don't take all of that. You don't have to do all of that. Well, I'm the type of person, when I get new information, I apply new information to me. And especially if it's coming from God's word. If it's coming from God's word, and this is what God wants us to do, I will be stupid for me to know what God wants me to do, but continue doing what it is that I want to do. God put this word in there. And that's why you study every single day because even if I live to be 120 years old, I'm still going to find something new in that Bible. And there's going to be something new that's most likely going to go against something that I believe or something that I am doing. Now it's on me. The onus is on me for me to be able to say, you know what? I am wrong. This is not how God intended me to live. This is not how God intended humanity to live. I have to make the change. And the problem that we have, guys, is that we want God to make the change. When God is God, who he was then, now, and will be. So, this video with Mr. Allen Parr, I give this video a 9.9 .9 out of 10. To be honest, I still need a little clarification about Christianity being the number one religion. But for the most part, for most of that question, it was yes. And every other question was a definite yes. I am your boy Neil Legend. And you just got that work. Ugh.